Hi guys! Today we're going to be talking about copy rules for students, and this is for y'all's level for 6th grade. So you might want be wondering, why should I have to learn copyright rules? I'm just a student. Well, first of all, they help you know what sources you can and cannot use, and there's many different types of sources that you can use. Uh, two, knowing the rules helps keep you from getting into trouble. If you don't follow copyright rules, you can get into lots of trouble from failing or having to pay a fine or even stealing somebody's work, which you don't want to do. And thirdly, it's better to be on the side of safety than to get caught stealing other people's work. So if you know the copyright rules and you follow them correctly, then you shouldn't ever have issues with being accused of stealing somebody else's work. So, number one, one type of material would be printed materials. These are things like maybe a printed workbook or just a chapter of a book in general, maybe even articles or something from a newspaper. Um, one chart or picture or even a cartoon per newspaper is able to be printed out and given to students as work or even something that you are able to use and put into a project. You are able to take um, a little piece of an article or an excerpt that's less than 250 words. You are also allowed to use a story or an article as long as it's less than 200 and 2,500 words. A workbook cannot be copied in its entirety. And if you do have permission from the author or the creator to make copies, the copies have to be made from an original, and the original had to have been purchased legally. On the next slide, we have part two of printed material because this one's got a lot of information that goes with it. If you make a copy of a whole work, and that might be something like an entire book, you have to have the copyright information, and it's got to say that that's acceptable. You also have to have purchased it legally. A librarian is able to make up to three copies as a replacement, but again, they have to have purchased that object to begin with. I can't just randomly make a copy of something I didn't ever buy to begin with. Also, a portion of the work has to have the copyright information. You gotta make sure that what you have is legal, and that if you are making copies of something, you have permission to do so. Okay, the second one is photos and illustrations. Photos, pictures, or a collection of photos, or a collection of pictures. That's what, inclu that's what is included in this section. You cannot use more than either 15 copies or 10% of a collection of either photos or a collection of pictures. Especially not if you don't have the permission from the the photographer or the illustrator. You can use a single piece of artwork or photography that's by one single artist, but you can't use more than five pieces of their work without their permission or their consent. Sometimes you'll find older pictures that are on the internet, like on Google, and stuff like that is sometimes considered to be public domain. Public domain means you don't necessarily have to cite it. However, you always have to check to make sure that the pictures that you are using have copyright no matter how old those photos may be. You might also be wondering at this point, well, how do you know if it's copyrighted information or what does that look like? And usually there will be some symbols somewhere on either the paper if you have a hard copy or even on the internet, they put these little logos on top of the, um, the pictures that you're looking at. And it'll say something like CC for copyright, or it'll have other little pictures. Videos, and there's a couple different things with videos. If you are viewing a video or watching a video, especially if you're working at school or for a project, you have to pay for the video in order for it to be used as a project in your classroom. Videos can be referred to as it may be a DVD. In y'all's case, it's probably going to refer to clips 
that you find on some place as such as YouTube. Copies of a film can be archived to replace lost copies, and that means that if you lose the copy and it was something that was purchased from the school, you are able to set aside and save a copy to replace the one that's lost. Any type of video, if you're going to use it for instructional purposes, or especially in a school, it has to be purchased or bought. Any video that you're going to use for your projects and your activities, you have to make sure that they have an educational purpose to them. It has to serve an educational purpose. The other part of this is video and projects. So all type of video that you use, it has to be a small percentage of the whole video. The rule here is that the general it's 10% of the video or three minutes at the maximum. So if you're going to try to use something for your project and you think that it is relevant and it's educational, that's great, but you can't put more than three minutes of that movie or that video into your project. You have to kind of narrow it down and cut some of it out. All of the videos that you use have to be purchased ahead of time and legally. And again, you have to have copyright information in there to give credit to the source and so that you don't steal information. Music is another big one. Music, y'all like to put that inside of projects, especially kind of give background noises in there to make it maybe even match the mood of whatever you're working on. Music could be anything from a record player to a CD, a clip from the internet, something from Spotify, anything like that. 10% or less of that song or whatever music you're listening has um, that's been copyrighted can be used. And that means, especially if you look down here, 30 seconds max of that musical work can be used. Uh, reproductions of music could refer to the a performance of something, you're displaying something, maybe you're even reproducing, reproducing that music content. And if you're doing that, you have to make sure that it is copyrighted and check to see what you are able to do with that. Computer software is another thing that you need to be aware of. We actually do have software at school. Some of them are uh, outright purchases where we have paid the company to use their products. And other things that we have are licenses. A license would be something like we have a subscription to Eduphoria, and we have to have enough licenses for every kid. So if there are 25 of you, I have to have 25 licenses. I can't have 25 licenses and 32 kids and try to make that work. That wouldn't be legal. Software can be installed on your computer or even your iPads, and y'all do have lots of software that is installed on your devices. You have Seesaw. The number of people that are using the program cannot be more than the licenses purchased. Again, we use Seesaw pretty often. If we have 500 licenses for Seesaw in this school building, but we have 600 students, we wouldn't be able to just try to make those kids get free um, access to Seesaw or try to double you up on an account. You all have to legally have your own accounts for it to follow copyright laws. The internet. You all use the internet quite a bit and you will use internet for research purposes. You are able to download images from the internet for projects Anything that you find on the internet can't be reposted without permission, unless the copyright information says that that's okay. All information or photos that you download have to be gained legally from the website that you find it on. Photos or sounds can also be downloaded for your projects, but again, they have to apply to those following the rules um, printed above. You can't just take something from a website or try to record it over to make it work. That doesn't work, that's not legal. Anything that you get from the internet has to be legally used. Television is something that um, you need to know about, but you might not really be able to use for a project. Television refers to anything that's broadcast, maybe a sports game on ESPN, even cable if you're watching something with like Dish Network, or even a tape that you make from a program. 
If you use a broadcast, you have to make sure that you're using it for educational purposes in your project. You can't just pick something and hope that it's good. A cable program could be used if you have permission from the original source. Schools are allowed to keep broadcasts for 10 days um, and they can keep cable programs for lots of years if they have the permission from that source to do so. Lastly, what are some benefits of following copyright rules? If you follow copyright rules, then you can't be accused of stealing somebody else's work. If you follow copyright rules, you can't be accused of fraud for stealing somebody's work. If you follow copyright rules, then that means that you are safely using works that are not your own. You're following rules that protect you and it protects the owners of their work. If you worked hard to create something and then I stole it and said it was mine or I didn't give you credit for it, you wouldn't be very happy about that. People make things on the internet. They make videos, they make clips, they make pictures, and they make music. You have to give credit to where you get your information from, and you have to make sure that you don't steal their information. Owners of their work need proper credit. If you do these things, then you are following copyright rules. And here is my list of references for where I found my information to share with you guys about copyright rules.